guys welcome back to brisket medic uh man we've had some storms roll through here and uh i can't keep the dust down or off of anything lately but uh if you're new here welcome we're so glad to have you i know we've got a lot of new subscribers from last week's uh video and uh, we're really excited not only to have you but we're excited about the growth that we're having so that we can help teach more and reach more uh with uh education about barbecue Today, we're going to be doing a little bit of a modification on our Pecos. Again, um, my biggest goal with this Pecos is to have the most effective and efficient smoker. Now, let me kind of explain to you what effective and efficient means. You can be one without the other. Um, you can be effective by moving something and hurting your back. That's effective without being efficient, but I could be efficient efficient with moving something and move it to the wrong place and that's efficient without being effective now um, I could use a piece of equipment to move that thing to make it efficient but if I put it in the wrong place it's not effective and so on and so forth but now if I do those things together if I put it in the right place if I use the right equipment and I don't hurt my back I'm both effective and efficient now I hope that makes sense to what I'm trying to do with this smoker I want it to be able to be efficient and not burn up too much fuel but I also want it to be effective in burning an even good flow much like you would see in a more expensive pit now much like a car's engine uh, a smoker works the same way it's kind of a large air pump and now that we've increased the exhaust size by adding that stack I believe it would run better if we increase the throat from the firebox to the main cook chamber and so a couple of weeks ago I did order a plasma cutter um, from the recommendation of Wrangler Star and uh, it's a cheap Amazon plasma cutter I think it's the Hero Cut um, I got the 45 amp the 220 and 110 volt and anyways it works really great and uh, so what I did was uh, cut into this thing opened up the throat from the main chamber, from the firebox to the cook chamber, and I opened up uh, for a little more even flow into the exhaust. It had like a half inch gap or a half inch lip all the way around it. Air flows like water, so if it hits resistance, it's gonna bounce back. And uh, we really want to have the best flow we can to make it both efficient and effective. So I'll throw in some clips here of me uh, using my new toy and getting this thing opened up and let you take a look at it. I think it's time for us to start a fire and see how this thing flows, see how it burns. I believe, I could be wrong, I may be able to take away the, the plate completely. Um, and if I do need to use it, it'll just be for radiant heat, much like a uh, blocking log would be used um, or a uh, water pan possibly. So I'm excited to see the turnout of this. Let's go ahead and get it lit up. Looks like it's got a pretty good draw. The new opening is right at great level, so. Guys, it's been about 30 minutes and our smoker is rocking evenly across. There was a, about a 15 degree difference when it first started up, but now that it's been rolling for uh, 20, 30 minutes, um, the, the heat has evened out. Uh, it's within just a couple of degrees from the fire side to the stack side. I'm really happy with that. Um, but another thing I want to point out is that stack is absolutely pumping. 
just uh, you could see the heat waves and everything pumping out of there um, I just threw another log on there and it's already caught it's doing really well it's drafting extremely extremely well like I said with a new car you put a bigger exhaust on it um, like a big truck I've got a I've got a super duty and if I was to put a four or five inch exhaust on it I'd have to have a cold air intake uh, to allow more air to come in for that air pump to be more efficient same thing with the smoker and uh, I trusted that theory enough to to take a plasma cutter to my favorite smoker so we're gonna go ahead and uh, I threw another log on there just now we're gonna go ahead and get this chicken prepped up now we're gonna be uh, cooking this because I mean I could burn for 30 minutes and see how it does or I could actually cook something and see how it does and if you're watching this that means it worked or it failed so miserably I couldn't help but share it uh, I have a feeling it's gonna be good to go so we're gonna be doing a super simple easy chicken um, chicken is probably the second most forgiving thing you can cook on a smoker the first being a pork butt um, and so I've got a a young chicken without the neck or the giblets um, it is sitting in a bit of a brine um, always fresh never frozen raised cage free and uh, I'm just gonna get it out of this out of this bag I want to make sure that when I cut it I'm not cutting into the chicken itself Trying to be really careful here. All right, let me go ahead and get some gloves on because we are dealing with poultry. I want to make sure that I'm being safe. Even though I'm just eating it at home and 99% of the people cook without gloves at home. Um, I'm used to using gloves and y'all tend to complain when I don't. All right, so we're gonna pull it out of this package. Try not to spill too much of the brine onto your board because we are gonna be using this for seasoning. We're not gonna be doing a ton to this chicken. Again, this is gonna be something super simple and easy. Um, not only is it a way that I can test out um, the efficiency and effectiveness of my smoker after these new mods, but also it's a good way to show you how simple and easy chicken can really be. So uh, let's just take a look at this thing real fast before we get started. I want to make sure there's nothing that I really dislike about it. Nothing's jumping out to me that I dislike. I, I just, I, I will always and forever not like the tail. And I will always and forever cut it off. There's just something gross about it. Okay, a little bit of neck meat there. Nothing fancy here, folks. We're not worried about the skin. Like if we were doing competition, we'd be worried about the skin. We're not worried about that. We're not worried about separating the skin or anything like that. What I am gonna do is uh, I'm gonna grab some paper towels and I'm gonna get this all dried off so that we can come back and get ready for seasoning. We really kinda wanna get the skin dried a little bit because when we season it here in a minute, um, we want this to have some pretty uh, crispy skin by the time we're finished cooking it. So, uh, and this is going to be a big deal when it comes to making that happen is having it dryish. So, um, again, this is super simple. Nothing fancy about this cook at all. So easy a six year old can do it. In fact, I'm going to have one come over and get this seasoned up for us. She's been excited. <laughs> She's been excited to be on the channel and she is super excited to be here right now. So come on over. <laughs> All right, say hi to everybody. Hi everybody. <laughs> All right, what's your name? Paisley. I knew that, you're my daughter. <laughs> How old are you? Six. You're six years old and almost eight foot tall, right? Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay, we're gonna be seasoning this, and what are we gonna be using, Paisley? Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, all right, so turn it around. There you go. 
give it a good <laughs> shake. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Normally we don't uh, rub our meat, but we had a bunch dumped there. <laughs> We're just gonna pat this in and uh, flip it over. All right, Paisley. Good job. Make sure you get it all over. Get it over here on this side. Get up above it some up here. There you go. Okay. We're going to pat that down. All right, can you put some right there? Pick up some. Don't touch it. Oops. Good job. All right. Super simple, folks. Remember, that's all we're doing. It's super simple. All right. Can you pour some in this hiney? <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. All right, can you close that lid? thing looks pretty good so we're gonna let this sit let it get a follicle not for too long remember don't let your sit uh, don't let your poultry sit for too long on the counter uh, or outside or wherever um, and uh, our smoker is going still right around 250 degrees and we'll go ahead and get it put on there and we'll catch you then all right we're ready to get this chicken on yeah Alrighty. so let's get this opened up <laughs> it's so yummy right now. We're going to put this almost to the middle of the smoker um, just to kind of feel what's going on. The breast is going to be shooting towards um, the firebox. That heat's going to hit the breast and go over so that we get a nice even cook. We'll be checking on this in the next 30-45 minutes. And we may be hitting it with a little bit of butter spray just to make the skin look pretty. But uh, other than that, we're just going to keep managing a clean fire. And uh, clean fire, clean smoke, makes chicken absolutely delicious. Nice yep. crispy skin. You like the plan we got? Yes. Good deal. <laughs> Awkward handshake high five. <laughs> All right, Let's see a little bit. All right, folks, we're just over two hours in, and uh, we should have been here almost an hour ago at the, about the hour and a half mark. Um, but honestly, guys, I had to relearn how to uh, smoke in this pit because uh, the change in the flow has changed how I have to smoke. And so the fire now, it likes to be closer to the door, and that's going to eliminate a lot of that radiant heat. But it likes to be closer to the door with the door shut, the vent fully open, and a little bit bigger splits than what we used before. So um, each pit's going to be different according to your climate and everything. The thing is, you just really need to learn your pit. After you make any modifications to it, that's why we do these test cooks. So learn your pit. It did take me almost two and a half hours to get us where we need to be, where usually it would take me about an hour and a half. Only five hours later. <sighs> Start to finish five hours for a chicken is too freaking long. But uh, again, I had to learn the smoker and uh, there's some more tweaks that need to happen. Now that I've opened up the intake, it loves to burn at 250 degrees, but if I want to crank it up to 300 or higher, there's going to have to be some choking off at the exhaust to be done. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. It is sitting at an internal temperature of 165 degrees at the breast and the thighs. We're going to have it for lunch tomorrow, but I'm going to give it a taste for you. I love you. Oh, she is very wet and juicy. And the color is very nice. Nice golden brown. I don't know how that's picking up on camera right now, but uh, absolute beautiful color on it. Nice skin. I'm going to pull off a wing because it's my absolute favorite part of a chicken. Wing tip, always overdone. But a wing, man, that's like the best. It's super hot, I just pulled off the smoker. Beautiful salt and pepper taste. Paisley went to bed, but she really wanted to try this. 
and I don't blame her. It's absolutely delicious. Mm. And all we used was two parts pepper, one part salt, kosher salt, 16 mesh black pepper. The ideal way to cook this would have been uh, 250 for an hour to an hour and a half and then crank it up to 3 to 325 for about an hour and it'd be finished. I was going to go crazy guys. I could not figure out why this was not heating up. That cook last night took way too long. It took almost five hours in total uh, and uh, that's just too long. Now if I was cooking a brisket that would have been fine but I could not get the temperature rise over 275. Actually I couldn't get it over 250. It was sitting right at 250 perfectly and that was kind of the sweet spot for it. Uh, but the way I did it was I put a, a log on top of the exhaust and blocked it off about 50% uh, for the cook. And that got us up to 275 and finally finished that chicken. As you saw, it was nice and crispy. It was delicious. It had a great color. It was juicy. All those good things. But it took way too long to cook. And I couldn't adjust my heat um, the way I really wanted to and the way I'm used to. So today I got out here for a few hours and played with it. And I, I think I've got it down now. I cut six inches off the exhaust. So instead of 24, it's 18. I took the baffle plate completely out. I have that door closed with the vents all the way open and I'm burning regular size, well, bigger, bigger splits than before. Before it would be this in half, uh, but I'm having to load it less. So it may be burning the same amount, but I'm having to do less work. Um, as far as splitting and coming out here loading the firebox and so on and so forth. So, um, from firebox side to exhaust side, this thing is running almost dead on even. I mean, it might fluctuate as I add a log five, five, 10 degrees, but uh, in 10, 15 minutes, it, it levels back off and uh, it's within a couple of degrees from side to side and I'm very, very happy with that. Five, 10 degrees is pretty uh, understandable in a pit this size. And when it's less than five degrees variance, that's pretty amazing. So um, I'm really happy with, with how we've got it right now. Um, I knew kind of adjusting the intake would, would it affect the, the output. So um, I knew we were gonna have to make some exhaust um, modifications um, and we're probably going to do a little bit more exhaust modifications in the future um, but now that I've got uh, now that I've got the right um, size of the exhaust for the intake I can use those calculations to build a better more aesthetically pleasing exhaust so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for uh, sticking around. This was, uh, man, that was a rough cook. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, that was frustrating and it was rough. Anyways, thanks guys for watching. We love you. Take care of yourself. Drink more water.